Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today, I have a special guest, and I wanted to say sometimes life takes a whole different turn that when you make a decision and you are so precise and clear about it, everything comes together. Talk about manifestation and manifesting things in life. So today, I my guest is Irma Viega. Hi, Irma. Hello. And uh, Irma is a friend, a colleague, a part of, we've known each other for about eight years eight nine years Mm -hmm. well we've known each other before Kiwanis too through uh, community chamber and Kiwanis so we're gonna have to um, evolve and break through what our talk is going to be is going to be our language of acceptance language of communication language of our gift Today is about Heal Talk with Irma, who I would like to introduce you in a short little way. By trade, you're a real estate mm-hmm. uh, agent, okay? Uh, broker? Uh, just real estate agent. Just a real estate, not just a real estate well, agent. Real estate agent yes. She's a real estate agent, but, be, but bigger than that, Irma is a woman, an influencer, uh, mom, wife, and the president of the Glendale Kiwanis Club. Mm-hmm. So those are the titles, but we're not here about titles today. We're going to talk about heel talk and what you have healed, mm-hmm. where you are, and how you are of service to help others, mm-hmm. because that's what real talk is all about. So are we game? Yes. We are game. Sure. Okay. <laughs> So thank you for being here. Today is going to be um, revolutionary, mastery, and lovely. We are approaching the holidays, Mm -hmm. and it is time of giving. It is time of receiving. And uh, so I want to first and foremost to say thank you so much for being part of uh, Real Talk TV with Lisa because I have so much respect for who you are and what you accomplish and the way you accomplish. So right before we started, we were talking about uh, the power that we have as women and how we are support system for one another and how we can help and be of service to other women Mm -hmm. Uh, not only the work that i do as a clinical hypnotherapist but you as a leader because i look at you as a leader and of service so the platform is yours for you to share a little bit about yourself and who you are and how you've come to be where you are today that's a big question. <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> well, I'll start with, you know, what really um, has shaped my um, my service, um, my gift of service. It really started a long time ago, but I didn't have the, the words to put what it was. But when I first joined the Kiwanis Club and I became really active in the community, I started realizing how many puzzles of the pieces or how many pieces of the puzzle um, they were all there all along. I've always been like this. I've been, you know, of service to my family, always looking for something better for my family. And then when I got married, it just became more of that. It's really utilizing all the tools that we have around us to support and to grow. And so uh, for me, being a service is just secondhand. Um, it's always been, it's one of the highest value. I'll tell you when uh, in 20, I don't know why I'm called to share this with you, but in right in the middle of the pandemic, I think let's see, it was 2021. Uh-huh. Um, I sat down with my with my kids and my husband, and I get we we listened to a short meditation, and 
and then the 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 rules of the meditation were to to once they listen to the rules to to stop you know really uh, come together with a piece of, a blank piece of paper write the date down and write the numbers one through ten and okay. in this meditation the uh, the the directions were just write down the ten things that bring you joy and we were in the middle of the pandemic. My kids had Zoom. We we left the house just to walk our dog. We saw no one. We talked to only our family. So it was very um, isolated. Uh, very isolated is the right word. And so we sat down and we wrote these things of the 10 things that brought us joy. We realized that not only was it the things that brought us joy, but it was really just um, a translation to what our values were. And so, uh, we then shared each other's uh, 10 things and I think four out of five of them we were we were in common like we shared the same values and the, the one that really stood out was being of service hmm. my husband wrote it my kids wrote it and it's just um, I'm so grateful to be able to be able to do this and I've always taken my kids to be of service but for them to see the value in it and in, for them to Mark it as one of their joys is to help others. That well, really, really was impressive for me. You know, it's wonderful because uh, I believe acts of service is uh, acts of kindness, and that's one of the languages of love, right? So there is the auditory, mm -hmm. there is the kinesthetic, there is acts of service, there is also gifting and uh touch, touch. Mm -hmm. well that's the kinesthetic yeah and it's time yes time. time so and i think that's why i truly created the three e is giving women the me time so we come together to be together and it is like an act of service to one another Mm -hmm. Because even the uh, healing circle, what we do face to face, it's honoring the woman mm -hmm. across from us and saying, I understand what you have gone through because I feel it. And which leads me to who has been a mentor or someone who has given you direction as a woman as someone that you looked up or coached you or mentored you? You know, um, growing up, I, I knew enough to really look for mentors. And so it started at a very young age. Um, I started looking at outside of my home because sometimes I didn't get everything inside the home. And so I was looking for mentors everywhere. Um, as far as a woman mentor, I've had a I mean, my mom, my grandma have been great mentors to me. Um, my grandma had incredible faith, incredible faith. Mm. She she really um, gave me that structure of faith. There is something higher and there is someone uh, greater that is really watching out for us. And then my mom just, you know, the mechanics of just being a mom, but still being able to be nurturing and um, and. And, sur and survive mm. everything that she has gone through um, and then ooh, my parents got a divorce when I was a junior in high school it's just uh, helping her through that um, also gave me the strength to really be there for me and so it, it's been it's been a lot of people but then outside of that I definitely have you know gravitated to like op the Oprah's you know I saw them as mentors I grabbed little bits and pieces of everyone's advice and um read a lot of books um you know i've read a lot of really great books that have shaped my decisions name my three life. of the books that have made an impact in your life um conversations with god of course with neil donald walsh mm -hmm. inyala inyala um in the meantime in the meantime uh, yes has, was great especially with for relationships yes and then believe it or not i Think and Grow Rich is still my go-to. Napoleon uh, Hill. Yeah, because it, it, you know, it seems all about business, but it really is about the personal energy that you have and that you give things. So it's very much personal as well. It is a personal development, not only energetically personal development of how we look at life and also being of service and the energy of money. 
mm-hmm. right? I remember there's, there was times that when business was very tough and I would hold my salary mm-hmm. and not pay myself. And someone told me, cash your check. <laughs> cash your own check. So when we talk about personal development, I know you're so much into that. And there are people who are saying, why do we need therapy? Why do we need self-development? And because there's a lot who are not into this. Why do you believe we all need to grow and learn from others as a self-development i mean there's courses we pay to learn something Mm -hmm. aren't we all supposed to know this yeah well and did you did you have a manual when you grew up when you grew up did your mom have a manual (laughs) right and so we don't we don't come out out of the womb with manuals or with what we should do and we, we shouldn't do and in a way it's a good thing because it allows us the freedom to really explore who we want to be so we're giving that we're given that free will and personal development of but anything in personal development which i think should be taught in school yes. should really just remind you of who you are who you naturally are and so all these things that i've learned through everything that i've done in my personal development journey and continue to do it's just a reminder of who I am, a reminder that it's okay to be powerful, that it's okay to speak my mind, that it's okay to be this 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 leader that is already in me. So all I had to do was nurture it, find the language, and put put it into um, into play. And so I will continue to do it because I want to learn and evolve as much as I can. And I think that really is when you talk about fulfillment. I find that fulfilling. I find that the more I learn about myself, the more I grow within myself, the better I will be at a mom, being a mom, a community leader, a real estate agent. And it's and it's it really just trickles into everything that I do. So the better I am, the better I will be to others. And to I myself. love that. <laughs> I love that. And you know, that's one of the reasons when I talk about Heal Talk Tuesday or tapping into our subconscious, because there are so many gifts we already have. And often we forget who we are. Mm-hmm. We give our powers away. We dim our own light. And the reason is that we take on certain habits and behaviors and things to mask or fulfill temporarily and then we resent ourselves some of my clients who Mm -hmm. have come over here is to peel away that and reconnect to remember who we really are or who they are so what is the connection that you believe is within real estate, leadership, service, and self-development that you have connected all the dots. I think real estate is a service. It is. It's if you're doing it, you know, because you think you're going to, for all the right reasons, real estate is an act of service mm-hmm. because the, the the better you are at helping your clients navigate that situation and the more truthful and congruent you are with your clients, the better it will go um, for them and for you. And so I do, how do I connect all of them? I mean, the only thing that I can think of is that the, the more I work on myself, of the more I work on being whole, um, that's the, that's what allows me to do everything. You know, I'm also a daughter, you know, I'm, I'm also a sister. And so it, understanding that I'm only this person, this one person, but a whole person that I can be in all these different roles and act in all these different things, it doesn't, it doesn't get complicated or stressful because I'm whole. And so the more I nurture that wholeness, the, the better I am at everything else. And that's how I think I bridge everything is, is, is feeding my inner wholeness or, you know, just be, you know, just being me. So how do you overcome feeling overwhelmed? I, I have a schedule. (laughs) 
I know, I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> I, I do a schedule every Sunday night. I know exactly what I'm doing and I prioritize. I give ah. myself uh, deadlines, you know, and then I've taught my kids to do this. And so I always, I'm a person of, of faith that when I write things down, not only do I remember them, but they come true. And so, uh, you know, writing, writing. You mean my, like a to-do list? I do a to-do list, but I also do a schedule and I follow that schedule. I time block. And so I, I'm able to, you know, okay, I know I'm going to spend this time with this person. I know I have to do this with that person. And so, um, and then in between it all, like last night, I, I didn't get to do some of my emails, but I did them at the end of the night because I knew I had time. So it's just time blocking and understanding and prioritizing. So that also comes to time management. Of course, yeah, time management. And I do this with my kids as well. We have an hour between, you know, activities and, you know, even with Carlos, like my husband, you know, I know he's going to be at work all day, but I know that when he gets off, he is going to have to do this part of whatever he needs to do. So I always talk about, you know, and then when I drive my kids to school, we talk about our day and what mm. we're going to do. And, um, and so they already know because I remind them of what they need to do. So yeah, time blocking schedule, um, really understanding and focused on, you know, my goals because of that. Okay. So there was this, uh, one of the self growth, uh, classes that I took, it was managing the time in four quadrants. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's not so much of the time, but it is what you do with your time. Mm -hmm. Right. So is it goal setting or is it time management? Is it, is it something that we have to have a vision where I'm going just like a train? One of my biggest metaphors mm -hmm. with my clients is you are the conductor of the train and the train may have two or three compartments. Mm -hmm. One of the compartments is passengers and the other compartment are the things that you haul, the things that you need in your life or you have accumulated. And then when we look at it, it's realizing how much do I, have I accumulated and put in that compartment, the second compartment or third compartment, that it's really become a heavy load or the passengers that have been sitting there that the ticket has expired mm -hmm. and they're still occupying that seat. Mm -hmm. And how have you done a work of feeling lighter and cleansed to see who, who do I want to surround myself with? Mm -hmm. And where are we as a household? surrounding ourselves the people we want to be with and what we want to do have you done uh that as the conductor of the train yeah um i do that quite often I <laughs> yeah so for me it's um i don't like negativity mm -hmm. and i don't like being told that i can't do something so for me it's it's a, so aligning myself with with people who believe in me who see the vision and um, and really support it, and so um, and who are like-minded, and so there's there there's there's I do that for my family, like my house is my temple, and so I really make sure I, you know, I protect that that energy in my house, and sometimes it's difficult with family, right? You know, and and the way I treat it is that I, I accept and I give them grace. For where they're at and you can do this with family members um and especially with the holidays coming <laughs> coming you know we're forced to sometimes see people that we don't necessarily you know would otherwise enjoy. or enjoy because they're family they're friends but i really just accept who they are give them grace and know that that's not me and and having the confidence to do that will allow you to be in anyone's presence but know that they can affect your energy because you won't let them in. And so uh, there are, I, I have selected friends and, you know, Carlos and I have couples that we go out with and because we know that and we love their energy and they're just like us. And so my, my, my kids have that. And so I always tell my kids that 
You know, the people that bring you joy is the people that you need to be around with, not the ones that give you a hard time or they're gossiping or, you know, anything like that. And so I try to, you know, really protect that. Because nowadays with teenagers, the children, and the media of so much negativity, so much expectations, mm -hmm. there's so much ex expectation on children, especially uh, what we see uh, the other one has, the Joneses and everything, the competition within our children. How, as leaders, we can, in your life, not only as acts of service, but guide our children. I think the biggest guide that you can be for your children is an example. Mm. So your kids don't listen to what you say, and I know that for a fact. They, they, they listen to what you do and they see what you do. So like, um, I mean, I'll give you an example. A couple weeks ago we did a, a, pro, uh, a we did a, um, a service for the Habitat for Humanity. They were moving offices, and uh, all we had to do was clean up the warehouse that they were in because they were literally about to give you know the keys back to the owner. Right. And so we did that, and I took my kids. We got there early, and we picked up trash for almost three hours, and they cleaned up the entire warehouse, and they broke down boxes, and they really cleaned it up. And, and at the end, you know, they said, Mom, we had a great time. Like, it was nice to do something for us, somebody else, to be a service. So I think that's the greatest example, is to show um, your, your, what you want your kids to do is doing it yourself. And so, and this, this holds true for anything. It's, you know, you could be an example to your coworkers. You can be an example for you know, your service club, um, you can be an example for your husband. And so we have a lot more um, power to inspire than we give ourselves credit. That's true. <laughs> I think uh, that's where our book, The Powerful She, and I want to say thank you for being one of the authors in there. You, in the book, uh, your chapter, um, you shared so much of your upbringing, faith, grandma, and the works that you have done and the roles that you took as a leader and now being the leader and you said i am so humbled and honored mm -hmm. but one of the things you also shared was as a child i had it in me mm -hmm. so if we have gifts not everyone knows how to develop their gift and that's why we need the mentors or the mm -hmm. self-development or the coaches um, how do you see your children's gifts and how do you allow them to shine how do they find their gifts because i think our children everywhere they have their own gifts mm -hmm. and instead of boxing them to what we want how do we allow them to shine well here, I'll start with how I found my gifts. Yes. And I'll, and I'll, and I know. And it I'll was a three, three-pronged question. Yeah, and, I'll, and I'll start with you what I see in my kids. <laughs> so for me, it's, you know, it's rooted in my faith. Um, and I, I saw it a long time ago as a kid. I always felt different. Mm. And for me, it really has been just uh, a reminder. You know, God is always reminding me. The universe is always reminding me of who I am and where I need to go. I don't have to put any effort into it because I'm always guided. I Trust. feel always guided. And that is one of my prayers. Please guide me, take me where you want me to go. And so in that takes so much pressure off me mm. uh, because I always feel like I'm at the right place because I'm there. And I was guided there for a reason. And so uh, that's how I, f I have found my gifts. Now in my kids, I give them the the space to explore what they feel is their gifts so i nurture their love for like for instance my 16 year old daughter she loves to teach dance and mm. she's been doing it for like a, almost two years now and she's so good at and it. she's great at it and she she loves this this compassion she has for the younger kids and she's 
so patient with him. She really it has that nurturing trait, you know? And then my other daughter, who's 14, um, she's super passionate about her friends. And she's super loyal to her friends. And I see the love and I see the personal touches that she does for their birthdays and spending time with them. And so I see her loyalty. And honestly, we need that as adult, adults. Like we, like they, I'm learning through them. They are, they are my greatest teachers sometimes. Hmm. No, not all of them sometimes, but all the time. Because, yes. you know, I see how loyal she is to her friends. And I'm like, I need to be that loyal to my friends to my community, to, you know, to everything. And it's just, you Plus know, children are, are mirror. They, yeah, they are. Yeah. And so I really enjoy um, watching them and engage in their life. Um, uh, I actually, I had a Facebook memory of, of my daughter, like, I think like nine years ago. We went to a Christmas dinner at our church. Mm-hmm. And she literally wrote down, this is my 16-year-old now, and she was a little kid. She, you know, her writing was really bad. <laughs> but she wrote down, "I love my life because it's beautiful," and and I say, I like, I like it melted my heart. And I'm like, yeah, life is beautiful, and it's just the way we see it. We choose to see it. And I believe through our organization, through Kiwanis, to any of the service clubs or any way we give, is to make one person's life a little bit better. Mm-hmm. and lighter what do we need not what do we need what do you believe children need right now in our community that we can give more of mm-hmm. uh, I, I think it's uh, I think they they need the ability to become leaders we need to give them permission to explore what leadership. they want yeah their leadership because they're our future. And unless we teach it to them at, the, at a very young age, they're not gonna know how to develop that leadership. And so leadership programs at school become very, very, very uh, important. And through Kiwanis, we do have a service leadership program. Yes. And so I believe teaching the kids to, to lead and to, do, and, to, and to do service twofold, to lead and to be of service. Um, I think our world needs more people of service. Lead, service, and Mm -hmm. (laughs) self-development. Yeah. Truly, um, the healing work that we do when I work with the children and we do the sound bowl healing or the meditation and things like that, I know it's no longer a fad. It's become a reality that so many are embracing, not only doing the meditations for themselves, but children. Because in Asia, this is norm, and here we are just yeah. implementing it. So coming together in the mind, body, emotion, the physical, mental, emotional, professional, personal, when we combine all of that, I think uh, if I were to ask you, what is next? What is the one thing that you would like to share and or create or develop what's on that line of yours for the next month for Mm -hmm. the next month or one year what would that be well currently i'm very engaged in my um my latino community so developing that um the company that i have right and that you just started that we just started and um and really providing this these resources in the, the Spanish language. Beautiful. I, I think it's going to be um, really well received because so many of Los Angeles is Spanish speaking, and they need they need resources in their own language mm. so they can grow and grow their business, grow personally, um, and so that's that's what I'm working on. Um, but altogether, I want to have a great um, year in my. Kiwanis Club, so I'm building, um, you know, our SLPs there, our service leadership programs, and um, really get back to what I would call normal, you know, get back into networking, into being around people, um, being of service, and really helping people grow, 
And so I just think all around, it's just going to be community. And that's going to be the number one thing. And I believe you truly are a powerful she. Thank you. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> power, yes, thank you. Power is not the power that we exude, but it's the power that we are. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I wish you and you and your family and your community a blessed holidays. And thank you for being part of us. Mm -hmm. And let us be of service, especially now that the holidays are upon us. Remember, one good deed keeps you fulfilled. Yeah, and if you're looking to be of service, definitely Join us. we are a resource <laughs> for you because we were deeply rooted in our community and we can definitely guide you to the right place yes <laughs> and by all means dm me message me and uh, be our guest at our club come to learn how we can nurture the children the upcoming children and be of service to one another yes and until next week where we meet i bid you goodbye god bless you and see you next week Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, Irma. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> What's that? Bye, everyone. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.